Mike, good to see you. Good to see you, Moses. We just finished school, and we're in the bus, and you came in from Van Leer, you couldn't go to university, and you got a job at the factory there. And the one thing that I had in mind was, oh my God, this is my senior. Do I stand up for him so he can take my seat? In the bus. In the bus. Yeah. And I decided, no, I'm not giving you the seat. So <laughs> I'm not giving you, up so, my so seat. So I was going to work for night shift and you were coming back from school. So it was late in the afternoon. That's correct. And exactly. I was in a bus and I was going to work. And people don't know that I was earning 76 rand a week. <laughs> I didn't care whether you stood up in the bus for me or not. The most important thing for me was to be at work early, right yeah. on time. So I used to live my home probably around five o'clock, but the shift started at six. So let's talk about African time then a little bit. I'll and never late. I'll never be late. Tell me about that. Punctuality is the politeness of kings, you know. People like CEOs, people like chairpersons, people like owners of businesses, they arrive 20 or 30 minutes late. I don't know whether it's power play or what, but I hate it. Otherwise people would be late for their own funerals as well. But tell me about teaching. As well, we talk I about grew it. up understanding that one day I will be able to teach, but not teaching in a traditional sense, not in a classroom teaching people. I, am, I believe I'm capable of articulating any difficult subject and making it simpler for people. Mm -hmm. So I ended up then being, becoming a teacher. But I knew that that was not my place. Why? Because I cannot fit into the normal school environment, which is eight to two. So then I decided that I think I need to go and find a job where I'll start at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. and finish when I want. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I moved into the private sector. I still do believe that you'd have made a better soccer coach than a businessman. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, at Tefluop, I realized that most of the soccer teams we, we were competing by region. So the team that belonged to Springs, East Rand people, not so to people, so to people had their own. Mm -hmm. So we had our own East Rand team. And I felt that to take this team to the next level, which is my dream all the time, mm -hmm. I want things to move from one level to the next. Every time, how do we improve? So at Tef Lopa said, we were wearing strange jerseys. I didn't even know the brands at that time. But then at that time, Mamilori Sundowns came to South Africa, eh, brought Kappa to South Africa. It was a new brand, nobody knew about it. And I said to all of you guys, including yourself, we're going to wear a kappa jersey. And I thought you were crazy. And people said, it's a lot of money. I think it was 800 rand yeah. at the time. And I said, we're going to find 800 rand. And we found 800 rand and we made it happen. And we were the first team, not even in the PSL, at the N NSL or NPSL, whatever it was, who was wearing that except Mamilori Sundown, Suzola Mahobe, or whoever the yeah, rich person was. But at Tefluop, I said, we'll be the first one in the country, we'll be the first one. So that's what I do. You've, you've got a whole group of people that you're mentoring um, who've written a book. So I made it my mission in life that I'd like to make a difference in people's lives. And there are those people who come to me and say, I must mentor them. And I would ask them, what is, what is that? What is mentoring? And they say to me, teach us the ropes, take us through the, your journey. Well, my mentors were different. My grandmother was my mentor probably, but she was the most difficult human being I've ever lived with because she was a disciplinarian. Probably I picked up most of the traits from her. If I come across a young matriculant who has great results, I tend to then delve into their personal life other than the results. Mm -hmm. And then I start to say, how do I help you move you from one point to the next? I've got a young lady from Guatemala who's studying his fifth year medicine now. I sat with her and I said, what, what do you look like at the age of 35? And she said, as a medical specialist, specializing in this. And I said, I'll take you there. What is the objective of mentoring somebody? Well, a great mentor, we've got two ears and one mouth. And there's a reason for that. You listen more and you talk less. That's the first lesson for me that I've learned with these young people. I keep quiet. I listen to conversations. Some of them tell me personal stories. Some of them tell me business stories. Some of them tell me what I call crazy stories. But at the end of the day, going to your second question then is, how do you respond and make sure that whatever you're going to say makes a difference in the person's life? There are times where you switch people off mm -hmm. from the journey they thought they were on, but you know that you're going to disappoint them. Mm -hmm. And there are times where I will push you hard and drive you to a very uncomfortable zone. Mm -hmm. And I create those for these young people. Mm -hmm. I make them very uncomfortable. Give me the idea of the book. How did this come about? I love books. I love reading. That's where the whole story started. 
So if I'm not going to write a book, let me get these mentees sitting in a room on a Saturday morning, which is my free time. It's not free, but I'm working. So they came to my office and I said, guys, I all want you to write a book because you all want to be leaders. But I want you to focus on a subject that is close to your heart, but linked to leadership. Should leaders be Christians or be religious? Should leaders, what leadership style are we talking about? Can we talk about, and we spoke about it, we debated it for at length. And after that I said, can each one of you write a chapter? And for me, this book is going to be a reference book that's going to be used by younger people who'll be coming, who'll be mentees, who will be trained, and those people will relate to each one of these chapters. And the guys were reluctant. Why? Because it's a big ask. So I decided then that we will make this a proper book, must be professionally produced, get a publisher, make sure that the publisher understands the brief. And we spoke to several publishers, and some of them were talking about how do we change this, how do I didn't like that. I ended up meeting Professor Chilidzi Marwala. Professor Marwala is 46 years old. He's written 25 books. And I said, what are you looking for in a publisher? And he put them for me. He explained to me, and ultimately we settled for UJ Press. And because they understood the brief and they were prepared to do what I was asking them to do. And that's how then the book became real. For me, the journey is one, these young people being in a very uncomfortable environment to write a story. B, thinking about whether they, are they going to be challenged by somebody tomorrow that whatever you wrote, can you, def can you defend your opinion of you? Three, it's a legacy for them. One day they'll tell their children, if they can write a full book themselves, at least I contributed a chapter in a book. But generally, I'd love people to start reading. And that's, that, that, that's what drove me to this pro to end to this project. And it's my mission in life. I, do I have time? No, I don't. We make time. You're the chairperson of the council of the University of, you know, University of Johannesburg. You've got a family. You've got a huge business that's growing every day. You still love your soccer and your Formula One. Yes. How, how, mm. God has given us an abundance of 24 hours in a day. Abundance, you say? Yeah. Abundance. And, and it's abundance. It's, there's a lot of hours in a day, 24. And we must use it very well. I chair Masimung, which is our family business. I'm glad that my son is coming on board now. Then I run Seriti full-time as a CEO, the mining business, seven mines. And then I've got other responsibilities. I've got Rolf, Anchor, quite a number of businesses which I chair. And beyond that, these mentees, each one of them requires an hour a week, some of them. So in, that, in any day, I make sure that I make time for those who need my time. Muzi, I believe if we made time, we won't have the youth being neglected. We won't have the young people being forgotten about. We won't have the young people saying, where is our place in this economy? And I'm trying to find spaces for each one of them. And it's that whole concept when somebody said, one starfish at a time. Mm -hmm. Well, we've come to the end of our interview. Thank you for a good interview. I enjoyed it tremendously. I hope you enjoyed it as well as I did. I enjoyed it most. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Sure, sure.